Hey, Steelers so fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to our Pittsburgh Steelers News and video here on a Wednesday hump day. Kind of a fun offseason video for you guys today. I want to get into offensive starting position battles. Now, normally you do videos, you talk about, oh, the backup, backup running back battle, or oh, the backup, backup linebacker battle. No, we're getting into the actual starter position battles I see happening throughout training camp and the ones I'm most likely keeping my eye on as Pittsburgh gets ready for what's going to be a very interesting season. As we have talked about, it's going to be a crazy season for the Steelers. A lot of new faces, a lot of new guys coming in here trying to win jobs. We're going to get into all of those here, starting with uh, number one on our list of no particular order, because we're just going to go from one through four, and that is quarterback. we got to start today with quarterback. Obviously, this is the number one offensive starter position battle on the entire Steelers offense, because... We don't know who's going to actually win it. We assume it's going to be Mitchell Trubisky. At least I assume Mitch Trubisky will go ahead and win it, mainly due to the fact that Kenny Pickett is not going to be ready. But you have three really quality quarterbacks on this roster who I think are all going to get a fair shake. Now, Mason Rudolph might not get that fair of a shake because he is kind of number three on our depth chart. I would assume he's number three on the Steelers' depth chart. But you at least have a two-horse race between Trubisky and Kenny Pickett. Trubisky has at least... Had some time in the National Football League, had the ups and downs, took the Bears to the playoffs. Then, of course, all the mess that happened there in Chicago over to the Bills, and the rest is history. Now getting a nice, uh, at least decent-sized contract from the Steelers. But Pickett at least has the young flair to him, the young potential. We've seen what Mitch Trubisky can probably be. Can he be better than that? Sure. But Trubisky is the unknown, and that's the beauty of a rookie quarterback. You don't know if he's going to be Josh Allen or he's going to be Jamarcus Russell. That's kind of how it works in the National Football League. So this will be the number one battle, not just on the offense, but the entire Steelers team. It will take place for many months to go through training camp. They'll probably still not name one until closer to week one because they want to see people play in preseason games, and that will, of course, make it a, a long and drawn-out fight. But in the end, I do think that Risky will win it, but it's a battle to watch and my number one battle to keep an eye on here on today's video. Um, add Rayburn comment down below. Who is the best player on this offense? What do you think? If you just pick one player on the offense you think is the best overall, let me know who that is down below right now. All right, next on our list is the wide receiver position. And now wide receiver is a little interesting here because I think you're thinking, oh, well, Claypool and Deontay Johnson are the two starters and then someone else will be your number three. And I just, side note, I do consider three wide receivers to be starters because most sets nowadays are two receivers on the outside and one in the slot plus a tight end. So we're going to talk about three receivers uh, in terms of these battles. But let's just be real here. Claypool is the only surefire starter. Like, that's it. He's the only surefire starter. There's no guarantee Deontay Johnson is going to win a starting battle. Now, does he deserve to right now? Yes, 100%. But you have the contract stuff going on this offseason. That's obviously a big distraction. And the addition of not one, but two draft picks at wide receiver in the 2022 NFL Draft. We cannot overlook a guy like George Pickens to possibly beat out Deontay Johnson for the other starting role on the outside. I think George Pickens was... One of the more underrated wide receivers in this draft. I get that he was injured a lot in college. You didn't see a lot of him. But he was taken because of his potential. And his potential is very, very high. And so far, he's lived up to that hype. It's very early on right now in the Steelers offseason. You know, take training camp with getting pads on and true 11 on 11 work. And you know, training camp and preseason stuff. It's truly to know just how good George Pickens can potentially be. But don't be surprised if Pickens is the other receiver opposite of Chase Claypool instead of a Deontay Johnson. Or if things get really wild and Calvin Austin balls out during training camp. We just don't know. And that's the beauty of, I think, the entire Steelers roster, but really the wide receiver position because there's so much young potential there. And I'm very, very curious to see who's going to go out and win it besides, of course, Chase Claypool. Now, before we go and get into number three on our list here, quick shout out to our friends at BetUS, your one-stop betting shop for all of your sports needs. Go to chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use that promo code Steelers125. Get 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. Now, there are no NFL games to bet on, you know, that happen next weekend, but plenty of off-season stuff. You can bet on the Pirates right now. You can bet on postseason hockey. You can bet on golf. You can bet on you know, Wimbledon next week. Or how about Offensive Rookie of the Year odds? Yes, you can bet on those. Here's your list uh, in terms of the top Offensive Rookie of the Year odds according to Bet. U.S. Kenny Pickett right there at the top plus 550. You bet 100 dollars, you can win 550 bucks if Pickett wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. London with the Falcons plus 650. Traylon Burks plus 750. Garrett Wilson plus 850. Right, quarterbacks have the highest odds, and the only quarterback taking the first round was Pickett, so that's why he's so high up there on the Offensive Rookie of the Year stats. You can bet on that and more with our friends at Bet U.S. And again. First timer depositing 100 bucks to the deposit bonus of 125 percent when you use the promo code Steelers125. Okay, let's move on here to the offensive line position. Again, talking about starting position battles, the offensive line is an absolute, I'm not going to say mess, but it's very, very interesting. Like Everyone but the tackles are on notice. Like, everybody but the tackles are on notice right now in terms of starting. Now, 
We assume that it's probably going to be, you know, Mason Cole starting at one spot, and then obviously the two guards, they went ahead and got some new additions this offseason. Like, we think we know where this offensive line is going to be, but it's going to be an open competition. I think that's very, very important to say. It is not just going to be like, you're the center, you're the right guard, you're, you're the left guard, you're the backup. Like, the two tackles are, are, are pretty much, you know, stable in their position, but this is going to be a very, very intriguing battle for probably honestly, the entire interior uh, uh, Steeler offensive line. And it's an important one, too. The Steelers' offensive line last year was the main reason why Big Ben struggled. Now, Big Ben's old, and Big Ben's arm strength was an issue, but Big Ben was constantly being hit. He was constantly getting sacked, and he had no running back help. I mean, Najee Harris was good, but the rushing, uh, 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 I would say, abilities of the Steelers' offensive line from last year wasn't that great either. If the offensive line improves, this offense will improve. It is just inevitable. They have enough talent at running back. They have enough talent at wide receiver, and they should have a good enough quarterback to win some football games in the AFC North. This offensive line battle is the most important battle we're going to see uh, on the Steelers' entire, I would say, team this year, and it's one to keep an eye on for sure. Uh, who starts at both guard spots for the Steelers this year? Do you have a pick? Do you have any idea who will be the left guard, who will be the right guard? Give me your take and your pick for that uh, in the comments section. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Over 14,000 of you guys hate the Baltimore Ravens. At least you must because you're a Steelers fan. That's why you're covering the, or following this, covering the Steelers here. We're at 14,315 subs. If you guys want to help us grow and get more... I mean, you have access to great content. It's all free here on the channel for you guys. Go ahead and hit the red button down below. Hit the notification bell as well. The way you are notified uh, whenever we drop our latest videos. And we do a ton of stuff. Myself, Tom, Harrison, a bunch of guys uh, at Chat Sports obviously host here on the channel to give you guys as much Steeler content as possible. Okay, one more starting position battle. We're going to talk about a backup here, but really it's the other starter. Because I do consider most... Uh, teams with running backs to be running back by committee. Now, obviously, Najee Harris is going to be your number one. But who's that number two backup running back on the roster? We talked about this in the past, but it's worth noting again, this is another position battle that is technically not a starter, but it does make the list because technically they're going to be the other person sharing reps with Najee Harris. Harris should get the ball as much as possible, but when he doesn't, is it Snell? Is it McFarlane? What about the undrafted guys? You got Durant, you got Warren. I mean, there are plenty of options there. Who's going to be the number two guy? I think Snell's probably going to be it. I see them letting go of Anthony McFarlane. Talked about that on my roster video uh, this past week. But it is worth noting that behind Harris, there is a good position battle because let's just be real here. Najee Harris can't keep up the workload that he's had, or at least he had his rookie year, right? You don't want to have an Ezekiel Elliott situation where you run him into the ground in his first contract, have to pay him a lot of money because he was so good his first contract, and then now you're paying Zeke like 16 to 18 million dollars a year if you're Dallas, and Zeke is like super old and slow and a shell of himself. So you don't want that situation. You want to definitely go ahead uh, and, and 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 not keep it too light. Just balance it out in terms of who Najee Harris is splitting reps with overall. But that's the question is who will step up and be running back number two. As I mentioned, I think McFarlane has a really good chance of being uh, let go. I think Snell is going to be there. And then it's a battle for number three in terms of Mateo Duran and Jalen Warren, both of the undrafted free agents for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You guys think, will Benny Snell be running back number two? I think so. If you agree, type Y down below for yes. If you do not, type N down below for no. Okay, we'll wrap this up in just one second. First... The NBA draft is happening later on this week, really, actually, yes, or sorry, tomorrow, June 23rd. The guys here at Chat Sports will have you guys covered from our main Chat Sports location in Dallas, our big studios up there. Go ahead and subscribe to our main Chat Sports channel. Link is on your screen right now and also down below in the description box as they will be live for all two rounds of the NBA draft, breaking down every single pick with a chance for your team to maybe get the next great player. You know, where's the next Tatum? Where's the next uh, Giannis in this draft? Next Dray Draymond Green, Steph Curry, who knows? Our guys will break it down. Okay, let's wrap up with a quick run-through, again, of the four big offensive starting position battles to keep an eye on. Obviously, quarterback is one. I mean, we're going to talk about the quarterback's position all offseason now, and it's just, you just get out of the way. That's why I put it there at number one, because we don't know. Trubisky versus Pickett. I lean towards Trubisky. Some people lean towards Pickett. Who knows? Receiver, very intriguing besides Claypool. Johnson versus uh, Pickens versus Calvin, Aust uh, Calvin Austin. It's going to be very fun there. Offensive line, the entire interior is up for grabs. I think Mason Cole is kind of the center uh, that locks things down there, but who knows? And backup running back, who's going to be able to spell Najee Harris and get some of those other starter reps, split some carries with him. Maybe it's 70-30, maybe it's 80-20. Who knows? But splitting the carries is very important to go ahead uh, and help with the longevity of one uh, uh, Najee Harris. Okay, all time for today on our Pittsburgh Steelers news and review video. Plenty more content happening later on this week, so be sure to subscribe. And while you're down there, right below the, right above the subscribe button, there's a little thumbs up. So hit the thumbs up button to go ahead uh, and help us get as many likes as possible in the video to grow the channel. Because I'm telling you, ESPN, they're not talking about your Steelers today. They're talking about LeBron James. They're talking about uh, you know Russell Westbrook. No, you know, talk about the Steelers. We do it here almost every single day. So go down below and subscribe. You would not be disappointed. 
Okay, alternate day on our Pittsburgh Steelers news rumor video. I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.